T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 3, 2, 1, 0, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis on a mission to build, resupply, and to do research on the International Space Station. Houston now controlling. Atlantis begins its penultimate journey to shore up the International Space Station. Atlantis now on the proper alignment for its eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Four and a half million pounds of hardware and humans taking aim on the International Outpost. 30 seconds into the flight. Atlantis almost two miles in altitude, almost six miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center already, traveling 500 miles an hour. The three liquid fuel main engines now throttling back to 72% of rated performance, going into the bucket, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it breaks through the sound barrier. Okay, here we are at the very front end of the International Space Station. Uh, this is uh, the uh, forward end of Node 2, and uh, this is uh, right behind this hatch is uh, the PMA, the pressurized mating adapter, uh, to which the space shuttle docks uh, whenever the ne next space shuttle comes. You can see we have our flags up here at the most forward part. It's a 15-nation partnership, this International Space Station. So uh, we'll start with uh, the Node 2. We will uh, stop at the Kibo module here, the Japanese pressurized module and the Japanese logistics platform. We'll stop back there in a second. We'll take a look in the Columbus module, pride of uh, the European Space Agency, and our pride too. And then you can look down the stack, and you can see uh, several other modules, and uh, and even into the a little bit into the functional cargo block, the FGB, and then the service module. So it's a it's a really big space station that we got. Welcome to Kibo. Please enjoy and relax in this brand new, the most spacious and quietest room in the ISS. You can see here, uh, this is the Cybo rack, which is uh, for cell biology. And then we have a fluid rack, Urutai. So these are the two main Japanese science racks that are up here now. There's more that are coming. Let's take a quick look out the window before it gets dark outside. We're going around uh, every, the world every 90 minutes. So uh, it gets, uh, we get to see a lot of sunrises and sunsets. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful out there. So this is looking out the port side of the space station. And we're actually also on the front side, so front port side of the space station. And let's take a look what we can see out there. We can see the robot arm I was talking about, the GEM RMS. Those orange things are the solar arrays on the, on the port side. And you can see we have a full set, and uh, 15A STS-119 is going to be bringing up the, uh, the last uh, solar array on the starboard side. And you take a look, there's our blue, be beautiful blue planet there. And uh, looking at this and where we are, I'd say we're over the uh, uh, South Indian Ocean. You can actually see some icebergs down there, so we're actually probably between... Um, Africa and Antarctica. You can actually see the different uh, shades of the blue water. Okay, so now fly with me. We're going to go to the uh, we're going to go to the Columbus module. Here we are in the Columbus module see it's uh, also spacious it's also cluttered because uh, uh, it's a great place to store things or temporarily stow them uh, it's not going to be this way forever we're going to have it nice and clean pretty soon we're flying back to node 2 we'll take a quick look what else we have here we have my work area it's a little bit uh, uh, cluttered right now but this is kind of my desk it doesn't sit out uh, horizontally but it's it's uh, but it has everything I need on it. This is my crew quarters right here. You can tell has my name on it. And in fact, I can give you a tour real quick of uh, crew quarters. This is what it looks like inside. 
there's a fair amount of room. We'll get the, uh, has a standard uh, space station light on it. So now we're going into the Destiny Laboratory, headed aft on the space station. And uh, there's uh, my crewmate, Sandy Magnus. She's getting her exercise in for today. This rack is the oxygen generation system, and uh, we have a few too many things on this rack, and we're in the middle of cleaning it off, not, not to interfere, but you can see oxygen. We're making oxygen, and when we make oxygen, we're breaking down water into hydrogen and oxygen, and the oxygen comes right out here. The water we're making it either comes from the condensate uh, from the air conditioning system, you know, the water that's in the air, or urine. So we, this is a really neat uh, bio, um, regenerative uh, uh, life support system. And now we're going to go back into one of the first modules, node one, which is also called Unity. Uh, these are our, this is our our pond or our wall of water that's down here. Uh, we have different kinds of water, and these are called contingency water containers (CWCs). And you can see different kinds. There's water that you can drink, and water that you can use for other things like flush water or generating oxygen. Now, here's the airlock. Um, as we go, the Quest airlock. This crew lock is a uh, is a hatch that moves outside into space. So uh, you can see that hatch right there. In the meantime, we're kind of store, storing EVA-related things here. Uh, you can see this is a Safer, which is uh, a kind of a jet backpack that uh, we wear on the outside of our spacesuits in case we get separated from the spaceship. We can we can fly our way back in. I remember being a Capcom on STS-96 when I first saw these sides. That's pretty amazing. And we're floating into the Russian side of things. First and foremost, we are now in the pressurized adapter part of the functional cargo block. We call it the GAA. And it's also a docking port down below. As you carefully look down below, you can see the hatches. And inside the, that, what you can see in front of us is a, uh, the docking mechanism for the Soyuz. Now Yuri's been busy unloading the progress. We just finished an EVA, so things here in the functional cargo block are very functional right now and very cargo-y. So you can see things are just really, really full here in the FGB. As we leave the FGB here and go into the docking compartment. The docking compartment is another one of those vertical looks and it's a kind of a misnomer. It's not just docking compartment, but it's also a airlock. So Yuri and I went out in our, these two spacesuits a few weeks ago and went into open space and had a spacewalk. Continuing on down through here, we'll stop here on the way back is our Progress cargo vehicle. The Progress is a cargo ship, unmanned, uncrewed, nobody driving, and has the same kind of docking compartment. It's very much based on the Soyuz design, except it doesn't have any re-entry capability. And we're gonna take a look outside. And this is the hatch that I opened up and went outside for a spacewalk and we're looking aft on the space station. There's a ladder, some solar panels. We're looking at the service module, Zarya, oh, excuse me, uh, Zvezda. And looking at our, also our beautiful planet Earth. Let's see if we get a nice little view here of Earth. A little small treat. There's no tour of the space station would be complete without it. Last but not least, in the service module, Zvezda, which means star, it's the heart of the space station. It's uh, where we used to have uh, the only only place where we could create oxygen and and live with uh, the carbon dioxide removal system, as well as a uh, place to eat and sleep. There's my crewmate, 
Jury Launchikov exercising on the treadmill with vibration isolation system, the TVIS. So, this is our eating area, there's our table. And we're just getting ready for lunch. There's our water dispenser right there, Russian style. And, and our controller for the water dispenser. There's Yuri's room off to the side. You can see he has a sleeping bag right there hanging on the wall and a computer right here so he can call on the telephone, and write email and read books. So, and relax in the evenings a little bit because uh, we have long days up here. This is a surprise visit that you guys are paying on us today. So things aren't cleaned up, but they're real. This is exactly how we, we work and live in space. And that, that'll wrap up the tour. This is the International Space Station. A very good example of what uh, human beings can do when we work when we work closely together.